hello everyone, I'm Melissa Lacrib. Um, I'm from Algeria and I majored in education as my first major in order to become a teacher of English in high school and I was in American University of Cairo in political sciences. I'm a social activist in Algeria and I am the president of a civil society NG, uh, organization uh, that counts 47 persons, active members, in the wilaya of years. Um, I'm going to talk about trust deficit. What is it? So when talking about trust deficit, more often, more often than not, we tackle it from a political perspective, especially in the geopolitical region that is ours, that we directly link it to the regime's corruption, lack of efficiency in economic along with social accommodations that lack and that lead the population to lose trust in the ruling system. Nonetheless, it is still a global, a global issue, as according to the Pew Research Center, 3% only of the interviewed American citizens, as Anne said, trust their government to do what is right always. And um, among them, uh, the, the people who actually were interviewed, there is about 14% only who were uh, trusting their government to do what is right most of the time. And this compared to three quarters of Americans saying they trusted their government to do what is right always and most of the time in 1958. So we see the shift of the trust and how it is deteriorating from year to the other. Um, and trust deficit can be measured by how big is the portion of population that is vocal about its lack of trust and discontent. Uh, although, and depending with the democracy uh, that is reigning in the region and the country, we can see it also, if not in the streets, we can see it in social media and in the way people um, act uh, when dealing with the, the national institutions and the, the, the public health sector, all the, the sectors in general. It is also expressed through different actions from the part of the people, mostly by low to no participation in the country's political life, especially for youth and women, and low turnout in elections. Um, I can give an example of Tunisia's last presidential elections, because I was there as an observer, and, um, an and it is an instance of citizens' reaction after a country witnesses a trust deficit engendered by the successive failures of its regimes. As we see all the regimes that passed by Tunisia, Bourguiba and Ben Ali and the others, we see how people started losing trust and it showed in the alarming percentage of 45.02% in the first round of election, which is very low, um, taking into consideration that uh, Tunisia has the highest index of democracy in the region. Also, there is this resistance to and rejection of global reforms and measures, even if they appear to be positive. Um, especially now, uh, with the COVID-19 situation, and that is a very up-to-date example, where the state will give you that, tell you to do this and that, in order to avoid um, the, mo the, the spread of the pandemic and control it. And you have to abide by the lockdown and uh, the rules that the public sector and government gives you. So the public participation in this application of such me measures is crucial in order to make that happen. But it requires a relationship of trust between citizens and the state. If there is no relationship of trust between the citizens and the state, uh, applying the measures of lockdown, for example, this engenders in people to, sh to self-medicate rather than letting governmental health institutions do it for them, as we see it, or going on protests against lockdown as it recently happened in Berlin, which is crazy given the fact that most uh, doctors in the world say that it is something that people should not do, but because of the lack of trust of the population uh, to the global um, to the global NGOs, to the, to the public sector, and especially to the government, they tend to do exactly the opposite of what is asked of them. And this trust deficit is often enforced by bureaucracy and hierarchical chains.
that is that estrange the citizen from stakeholders stakeholders and government officials these officials are supposed to be the ones who translate the people's wish and wills into tangible actions since they are elected but it it uh, creates a sense of non-reachability and an availability to the population and these uh, stakeholders and government officials in whom there, there is supposed to be trust are seen as mere order implementers and some kind of enemies to the population also there is the lack of transparency be it from the government or the responsible institutions about the health of the economy and um, we also see that there is no real plan for the country's economy in the election uh, race so um, this along with the, the arbitrary taxation laws that were passed that are passed in general um, and generally on the back of working class is a consequent problem as well because when we don't ensure an economic well-being for the population they don't trust the, the the government at hand also from a civil society perspective uh, activists are seen to be either with or against the government which is a problem because instead of seeing them as people who help the population through uh, collaborating with the government it makes it harder for us because any that we may have be having with that same government can create um, a gap between the civil society and the the people or the target population that we are trying to work for. So it it uh, lessens the it lessens the efficiency of the work that the civil society actors are trying to do. Thank you so much.